theories that suggest that the whole universe goes in cycles of birth and death, it expands and contracts, and time sort of resets. I'm not sure how much evidence there is in I, I, in, in science, kind of, <laughs> yeah, writ large, that, that things work like that. Is um, it realistic? Like, is it possible at all? I think it's possible that the universe started with the Big Bang, which had very low entropic conditions, and then... F- from their entropy's just been increasing to where we are now. And it's not impossible that, you know, what we'd expect that entropy would just keep on increasing sort of away from the Big Bang. So eventually things are going to be very unexciting. There's just going to be, there's sort of no galaxies, there's no clumpiness, there's just big old gas everywhere. That will take some time. But eventually you'd expect just sort of nothing interesting at all. It could be that sometime after that, just through kind of sheer flux, you end up with another sort of low entropy point. And there, that would sort of be like a reset. Unlikely, but it would it'd be possible. And that would sort of look like the Big Bang to the people who came after that. What could be the trigger or something like that? I don't know what the, the causal trigger would be. All you can sort of speak to is the statistical likelihoods. All we know is that from a statistical point of view, there are lots more ways to have disorganized stuff in your world than <laughs> organized stuff. And anyone who's ever you know tried to organize a bedroom or a house realizes like pretty soon that becomes clear because if you just if you don't do anything it becomes chaos that's sort of ultimately the reason we should expect the universe to become more and more disorganized but of course if we let fluke arrange our living rooms we just sort of i don't know we let the kind of chance demons in and we just said look have at it just arrange the molecules in this room any way you like and just keep doing it day in day out what would you expect to happen when you let the demons loose what you'd expect is that it would be complete chaos right because they've just arranged the molecules kind of randomly But if they just keep doing that long enough, eventually, just by sheer fluke, they could in fact create you uh, a a settee and a television and a nice place to sit. Like it's not, it's not likely because that's a a very organized way of putting together all the molecules in the room. But it's statistically possible, right? It's it's a thing that could happen. Um, And if you let the demons loose in your room for long enough, it's actually a thing you might expect to happen because eventually there's a kind of state of arranging the molecules that will be one in which there are televisions and (laughs) chairs and so forth. That's an insight that Boltzmann had many, many years ago. He was trying to explain why it looks like time has a direction and his thought was exactly that. If we let the demons of the universe go for long enough time, eventually we would expect to have a very low entropy condition and then we would expect entropy to increase away from that. And in fact, the calculations are not quite right because the universe would have to be much older than we than we currently think it does to make it likely that we would get um, a condition like that. But um, you asked, you know, could there be a kind of restarting of the universe later? Well, if things went on long enough, it would be kind of like the room with the demons. Like you might think eventually, after a very, very long period of nothing exciting, eventually by fluke, you might get some excitement. And is it possible that this is not a first iteration? Like, is it possible that there was something already before? One thought people have had is, well, maybe this has just happened multiple times. So this is a kind of um, many universes or even a sequence of universes. And the thought is that if you kept having universes being born in various different ways and then continuing on their merry ways and then ending through whatever process end universes end, and then that then sort of spawning another universe, the thought is that eventually you would expect to get some kind of universe like ours. So roughly they are, they're trying to explain why you get a a kind of nice universe like this one, which supports life and has all this good stuff in it. To our knowledge, it's not the whole universe that supports life, it's just like our planet. Right, but there's lots of planets that have the right kinds of fundaments to support life. And in fact, they are massively more probable than they thought. So although we haven't actually found life, just the sheer number of them across the, the various galaxies makes it quite likely that there is something like that. Whether you think there's only life here or you think there's life... In lots of different places, I guess the question still arises, well, how did that come to be? Is that some kind of massively improbable thing? Some people, by trying to answer that question, think they somehow think that it's more explainable if we are one in a sequence of lots of universes. And I think the idea is meant to be that, look, maybe there were lots of previous universes which weren't that great. <laughs> so maybe they had, didn't have many planets in them and they didn't have a lot of life. But if there's enough of them, you'd expect one of them to have nice planets and life in it. And, and of course, the people who are reflecting on this question are bound to be in the universe that has the life. After all, they are the life that's doing the reflecting, right? So the, there's, there's no one in the kind of crappy universes to wonder about life. So of course we're going to be the people in the good universe. It's not obvious to me that you really need to to hypothesize that there are this sequence of worlds to do the explaining of why we're in this nice universe. But that is at least one way people do it. 
Uh, and that sort of fits in with your, like the question about, well, could there be a kind of a sequence of so, cycles? Yeah. That would look a lot like that, although they wouldn't be exactly repeating. So you wouldn't expect to get the same universe each time. Some of those universes are not going to be that great and that we, you know, but eventually you'll get a great one and you're in it. So it's sort of not like a, the Nietzsche and eternal recurrence where you get, you know, there's a version of us having this conversation over every universe. It, it, it's yeah, not like yeah. that. But it, but it is a kind of sense of a universe comes into existence, hangs around for a while and then goes. And another one comes into existence, hangs around and goes goes and that's certainly a model that various you know cosmologists and physicists have been kind of toying with how old is this universe it's 13.77 billion years old how is that measured of course you can't do anything before the big bang so even assuming that there was anything then to measure but um you've got stuff that happens from the big bang and so you've got the universe kind of expanding outwards from this very tight organized little point and so what you want to do when you're kind of trying to measure backwards is you're trying to look at in some ways signals that the big bang has sent out that you can kind of capture now one way to think about this is that when you're looking up into the night sky you're seeing light that's coming from you know stars primarily and of course they're a long way away so the light that you're seeing in some sense when you see stars you're kind of looking into the past because you're seeing information about how the star was back when it emitted that light. And if you can capture light or data from far enough away, then you're actually capturing information about how things were back then, which is kind of nifty, but it's also weird because there's this sense in which if that very star you're looking at had completely exploded and w was no more, uh, you won't be seeing, you know, it'll be... Until, like, yeah. Yeah, it, you'll be seeing that, you know, way, way down the tracks. We have this kind of phenomenology that... It presents us as though we're looking at stars as they are now, but of course, in fact, we're looking at them as they were in the past. And that, I guess that's how physicists go about measuring how old the universe is by um, trying to look at kind of older and older signals that are being emitted. From a philosophical standpoint, is there anything outside of the universe? Yeah, it's a good question. It's a difficult question to answer. Even if there were universes kind of, in some sense, outside our universe, we couldn't possibly get signals from them because we need light or we need sound or we need some way of causally interacting with that universe to be able to even determine that it was there. In a way, you might think that that's kind of what it is to be a universe. If there was some other quote unquote universe that we could watch or, you know, have causal contact with, you might think, well, that obviously that's not another universe. That's just some other bit of our universe. We're not able to even see the entire universe that we're in. Yes, there's always going to be bits. So in theory, there could be universes somehow that are kind of completely disconnected from ours and are out there. It's an interesting question how you would ever get evidence like what would lead you to think that. But I guess the idea that there are a kind of sequence of universes that are in some loose sense connected, like one after another after another, that is a hypothesis that scientists have come up with, not so much philosophers. And that is a case in which they are hypothesizing the existence of all these other universes that we actually don't have any empirical evidence for because we, we, you know, we have no light from them, we can't see them, we can't measure them, we can't touch them, we can't smell them. So maybe there could be reasons to think that there are these things outside of our own universe um, that could come somehow from our own theorizing, but it's not obvious what, you know, what that would look like. We can see our universe until a certain distance. What tells us that the universe doesn't just end like a meter after that or whatever? Oh yeah, skeptical question. <laughs> the whole worry about skepticism is a kind of perennial philosophical one um, and you're never really going to be able to fully rule out that that's the case because the universe could be like that so it could be finite yeah it could be finite we could be getting misleading evidence or it could be that the universe extends just to the point where we have the evidence for it. i mean that would be kind of fluky but it's not kind of impossible i mean it could even be that the universe is incredibly small and there's just this tiny little bit of it and what we're getting is just completely misleading information which suggests that there's a bigger universe out there so perhaps you and i are actually just brains floating in a little tiny bit of the universe where there's good stuff happening that makes it look to us as though we're actually sitting in a studio with lights and maybe none of that's real either. Yeah, it could be a simulation, it could be the could matrix. Be uh, that's right, it could be any of those things. And I mean, th those things are always very difficult to rule out. I mean, for all practical purposes, we have to act as if, th you know, that's not the case. I'm going to call my Uber when I leave here on the assumption that, you know, <laughs> I am in fact an ambulating person in the world. Mm -hmm.